everybody has something to hide, and these famous directors would love to make these movie mistakes disappear. I wish there was something I could do. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most embarrassing movies by critically acclaimed directors. Madam, we must have waffles. We must all have waffles forthwith. For this list, we're looking at directors who've been rewarded for their work, both with awards and box office returns, but who have at least one film in their catalog that stands out as dull, mediocre, or just plain bad. <laughs> Number 10, Alien 3, David Fincher. It's a long, sad story. I'm more than a little melodramatic. Try me. David Fincher's work on films like The Social Network has been justly applauded. I don't understand. Which part? But the stinker that is Alien 3 has been justly derided. Why don't you shut the f up? The movie's horrible dialogue, lousy pacing, and total lack of suspense aren't all Fincher's fault. But we tolerate anybody, even the intolerable. Not only was it his first big-budget film, he was also brought in late in the game and started filming with an unfinished script. Why? Why the innocent punish? The final insult that sealed this flick's fate? The studio recut the film without Fincher's input or consent. Why the sacrifice? Number 9. A Good Year, Ridley Scott. This is because I didn't shag you at the Christmas party, isn't it? Why did Ridley Scott, the director of Gladiator and Blade Runner, think that he had anything to bring to a soppy romantic comedy? The secret to riches, lab rats, is the same as the secret to comedy. Timing. Dude, you're all about action and manly men. Are you not entertained? What are you doing filming fuzzy long shots of picture postcard French scenery? Are they good memories? No. They're grand. The critic for The Guardian called A Good Year a humorless cinematic slice of tourist gastroporn. Bollocks. Yeah, what he said. It's times like this when everyone hates you. That's when it's fun. Number eight, Hulk, Ang Lee. Hey there. Okay, Ang Lee's crouching tiger hidden dragon was amazing. but everything that made it cool was missing from the director's 2003 take on The Hulk. I'm sorry. Really? Look, on one level, the character of Hulk is about the beast inside every man. But really, what he's all about is simple. Hulk get mad, Hulk smash. Puny human. Lee's crushingly boring, seemingly endless film took itself way too seriously and is one of the least fun superhero films ever made. You make me angry. Oh, am I? Number seven, The Lady Killers, Joel and Ethan Cohen. Oh, my. The brothers Cohen are known for their offbeat, quirky, subversive take on life, as evidenced by films like The Big Lebowski. When they stick to black comedy, no one can beat them. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. So what the hell were they thinking with the Lady Killers? Do not repeat the era of thinking. You go to a Cohen film looking for a certain degree of subtlety, but in Lady Killers, it's like they channeled their inner three-year-olds, proving that even smart filmmakers can do dumb things. That boy, he go out there like it was some pussy. I oh, shit! Mind your mouth. This is a Christian house, boy. No hibbity hop language in here. Number six, Elizabeth Town, Cameron Crow. A failure is simply the non-presence of success. Memo to Cameron Crow. When making a movie, something needs to happen to keep the viewer's interest. You'd think after Almost Famous, he'd know that. I have to go home. Count the headlights on the Home. But he seems to have totally forgotten it with Elizabethtown. Where does he live in Louisville? Actually, he's near Louisville. Louisville. L Louisville. Vol. Louis. Vol. He's in Elizabethtown. Yeah, Orlando Bloom's a nice guy, but two hours of him aimlessly puttering around is too much. 
especially when he's uttering dialogue that makes a first grader cringe. That's what they say, huh? Yes, that's what they say. I've always wondered this. Who are they? You know, them. Lesson learned, never make your lead character a shoe designer or let him say things like, A shoe is not just a shoe. It connects us to the earth. Number five, AI, artificial intelligence, Steven Spielberg. Maybe if Stanley Kubrick, who originated the idea for AI, had finished it, the film would have been a masterpiece. Stop it, David, stop Could it! You stop it, stop it, stop it now! And you would think that the man who brought us Jaws and E.T. could pull off a film like AI. I'm in bad trouble. But somehow, under Spielberg's handling, a potentially dark tale of robots interacting with humanity became a sticky sweet tale with forced humor, false emotions, and a structure that keeps falling apart. <laughs> Spielberg at his best is genius. Here, he's floundering. Why is this happening? History repeats itself. Number four, The Dilemma, Ron Howard. Ron Howard's known for touching, powerful films like Apollo 13 and A Beautiful Mind. So why did he agree to direct 2011's The Dilemma? Houston, we have a problem. This $70 million mess wants to be a lowbrow comedy. I got some serious ladywood here. But Howard clearly feels uncomfortable with the material, and that shows in every frame. I have to fix it on my own, Okay, honey. Ronnie, you're not fixing anything, and you're breaking more stuff. From its first trailer with its electric cars are gay line. Ladies and gentlemen, electric cars. They're totally gay. The dilemma was marked as a loser. I don't mean that they're homosexual gay, but I do mean your parents are the chaperone at the dance gay, right? You tuck it in and wear it real high gay. I don't want to disrespect anybody because I'm not about that. Number three, Alexander Oliver Stone. Never will there be an Alexander like you, Alexander the Great. They say it takes a genius to make a really terrible movie. So Alexander certainly puts Oliver Stone high on the genius list. I've known many great men in my life, but only one Colossus. The director had already proved himself with successes like Platoon and JFK. Now we're through the looking glass here, people. White is black and black is white. But everything is wrong with this biopic of Alexander the Great, from a miscast Colin Farrell to an annoying Angelina Jolie. You can love them for years, feed them, nurture them. But still, they can turn on you. The script is ludicrous, the pace is deadly, and even the history is inaccurate. Sorry, Ollie, but this Alexander is not so great. When it's over, all that matters is what you've done. <laughs> Number two, Piranha 2, The Spawning, James Cameron. <laughs> Titanic made James Cameron, King of the world! but 1981's Piranha 2 The Spawning made him king of the worst. I suppose you think that's hysterically funny. A film about piranhas that have learned to fly, we kid you not, should at least be trashy fun. But this is simply inept, with monsters that one critic said look like haddock with dentures. If I didn't have so much to drink tonight, I'd swear I was seeing things. Piranha 2 would have sunk another director's career. <coughs> Loretta! Loretta, what is that? But with Terminator, Cameron proved that he'll be back. Before we attempt to wipe our top pick from our memories, here are a few honorable or dishonorable mentions. We've got a situation here. Sergeant, you're breaking up. I can hardly hear you. The commander's dead. And everybody in the mine's gone insane. Well, the job I had before was as a psychic. I know, uh, but I, but it's true. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. <laughs> Take your 
stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Number one, Jack Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola showed genuine brilliance with films like The Godfather, but he's had more than a share of bombs, and Jack is the A-bomb of his career. What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? This dramedy is about a boy, played by Robin Williams, aging at an accelerated rate. Hey Jack, you ever get a boner? You know, an erector. Not yet. I'm hoping to get one for Christmas. <laughs> Coppola can't reconcile the shifts in tone between melodrama and comedy, and he lets Williams ham it up shamelessly. Hey, Dad, I got to play basketball today. They picked me. Yeah, not just because I'm humongous, because I'm real good. Watching Jack, you marvel at its sheer awfulness. <sighs> if it weren't for his earlier successes, you'd think that Coppola didn't know Jack about making movies. Do you agree with our picks? Yes! What other directorial embarrassments should we have added to the list? I'm more than distraught. I am devastated. I'm beside myself. I'm at a positive loss for words. For more enthralling top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. So if you want to hit me again, if that's going to... Ow! <coughs>